look at this. We've got the sunnies and we've got the waterproof pants. Once again, because I don't know what's going on. On the drive here, guys, we had horrible torrential rain on the motorway. And then we had blue skies, the sun was out, it was pleasant. So, you know, as always, I should probably stop mentioning it at this stage. Don't know what to expect, don't know what to tell you the weather's gonna be like. It's very settled in terms of the wind, all right? So we'll stick with that one at the minute. But we all know that can change as well. So welcome back to the channel, guys. Ulluk Pike for Wainwright number, what we at now? 13. Um, should be a, a fair, fairly straightforward um, clamber up to the top and we should get some beautiful views back down to the south, I think. Um, and yeah, no real expectations. I've got my, uh, I've, got, I've got all three of my lenses as I always have, but I want to talk a little bit about my telephoto lens. I, I just love it, like, bit of a spoiler for what's to come. She thinks I'm talking to her again. Um, yeah, a bit of a spoiler. I love my telephoto, but when we get up a bit higher, I want to explain why. And uh, for this particular type of photography, mountain or fell photography, why it would definitely be the first lens in my bag. <sighs> Sweet. So I just wanted to stop and give you, give you a quick preview of the route that we are taking. So we carry on up this path here, we're making good progress. And then we kind of go this way, we go almost back on ourselves up this sort of ridge line, I suppose. And it's only just over there, the top. So like I say, it is really straightforward, but look at the views already. We're getting incredible vistas back over towards Scotland, Galloway Forest Park, Dumfries and Galloway. Um, and Wainwright says, eventually, probably when we get up to the top, we see the whole of Bassenthwaite Lake, which is this one here, um, which is class. And by the way, if you're ever in a pub quiz in the Lake District, this is the only lake in the Lake District, all right? Of course, there's plenty of lakes, we all know that. What it means is it's the only one that has got the name lake in it. <laughs> all the other ones are waters or mears or tarns. So remember that, you might win yourself some money. <laughs> right, let's crack on. So I'm lying to you. I don't want to crack on just yet because I've realized that this vista that is behind me here is the perfect opportunity to talk about this the telephoto lens which like i said before this is what i want to talk about today now for those of you that watch me regularly you're probably thinking why are you talking about this thing again man you're always banging on about it but honestly since i've been doing fell photography mountain photography i've come to um another yet another realization of why this would be the first lens in my bag if i'm coming up um, a mounted to do landscape photography and this is just the perfect example right so this scene that you can see behind me as you're looking at it even there is quite wide you know, it's a wide vista from left to right, but it's even just a little bit wider. So I want to show you a little bit of a video as we sweep across this vista, okay? So imagine this, right? It starts on the right-hand side here. We've got this small rounded fell. Beautiful. Then as we go left, we've got all these gorgeous fields, and then we can see the distant peaks in Scotland in Galloway Forest Park. Then we get to Bassenthwaite Lake, and we keep going all across the lake until eventually we get to some of the bigger fells over there up at Winlatter Pass, um, which is like Lord's Seat, Grisdale Pike, Causey Pike. And then it finishes because everything there is like <laughs> where we're going up today. So there's no vista there. There's nothing to photograph. But my point is that whole sweeping vista that I've just shown you there, if I, if I only had a wide angle lens, for example, like I am so limited in what I can photograph. Say if I've only got my wide angle, I've only got 11 mil, you know, hypothetically. That would be three photographs max that I could take. Think about that. I'm so incredibly limited. And yes, of course, you know, I can, I can have foreground. I can maybe include some rocks or, or a tree or a, a leading line. And um, we can play around a little bit. You know, we're not completely limited to just two or three photographs, but do you see what I mean? We're, we are really limited. And think about this, right? 55 to 300, the same vista that I've just shown you then, but we can get in tight on like, uh, what would you say, like millions of things here. You know, all these fields, all the distant dry stone walls, the towns, the tops of the peaks, Scotland off in the distance, um, some of the wind turbines. We've got the whole of this lakeshore. Imagine if there was a load of beautiful cloud up on the fells in the background there. 
it really is endless. And that, that is why this is the first one in my bag, is because of its versatility. And on top of that, and this is something I've mentioned in the past as well, if we really want to capture a wide vista, we can do a panorama. And that it even more reinforces the, the, the fact that this would always be the first lens in my bag because it's so ridiculously versatile and it gives us so many options. Oh, it feels, do you know what it feels like to me? It just feels unlimited. You know, there's, there's thousands, like tens of thousands of trees down here and I could just pick out every single one of them with the long lens. So I hope that makes sense, you know, especially if you're a beginner, think about that. Um, like I said, we're not limited to two or three shots. That's a bit harsh with the wide angle lens, but do you know what I mean? You can't get in tight. You're limited with like big vistas, you know? Right, now I've got that off my chest. Let's crack on. <laughs> shot there the light is looking nice at the minute so we're set up with the long lens on of course I had to do it I feel I feel pressured <laughs> no um, it just would have been silly to have a video talking about the telephoto lens and not take at least one photograph with it but to be honest the fell that we're on today is perfectly suited it because we've just got views for miles across the countryside um, so at the minute you know, in contrast to what I've just said, the, the views to the east are blocked off by Skiddo, to the west and south, they're blocked off kind of by the fell that we're on. So we've only got those views for miles at the minute back towards Scotland, but of course that's wonderful, you know? And I'm trying to make something of it at the minute because we've got this particularly nice perspective looking back towards a peak called Criffle, which is in Scotland, over the other side of the Solway Firth. Um, but this pers perspective that we've got here, we've got this little collection of wind turbines, you know, windmills near near a town called Sillith, just over on the coast on Cumbria, you know, in England on this side. And I'm using them as foreground, you know, even though it's absolutely miles away. And they're kind of down on the right hand side. And then we've got Criffle, um, a, a big, you know, it, it looks big by the time we're zoomed in at what we're in here now, 220 mil. It looks quite big and sinister. Plus it's cast in shadow. Whereas the foreground where we've got the wind turbines, every now and again we're getting these splashes of light. It's like a patchwork down there on the grasses. It looks absolutely class. Um, so focused on one of the wind turbines, ISO 100 F8 and 1 1,000th of a second. So you can see there, it's still proper bright, you know, harsh light. But I think it looks class. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people don't really like wind turbines in photographs, and I get that, you know, they're not... Um, they're not wonderful to look at and the man-made and uh, but I really like them you know in photographs especially and they're really ubiquitous in the, you know the west coast of Cumbria and Morecambe Bay the places that I frequ frequent with my camera so I like including them in photographs you know I think it tells a nice story but yeah I don't know I guess this is fairly abstract in a way um, but definitely a good use of the telephoto lens and a really good example of what I've been saying obviously you won't be able to get this shot with a wide-angle lens if I shot in this direction with a wide angle it'd be nice it'd be pleasant you know we get a lot of these fields um the cumbrian countryside a little bit of bass and thwaite lake but you know criffle and scotland and everything that i love about this particular scene would just be lost off in the background and i've said this in the past as well and and I use lots say this in the comments as well and i love this one um, this is the perfect quote to describe the telephoto lens it's like being able to take a photograph within a photograph. Imagine a shot at 11 mil, big wide shot, and then being able to look at it and pick off tiny little bits and then use the telephoto lens and zoom in and, and you know, take what you want from the big wide shot and make it into a completely different photograph altogether. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna be nice. Maybe not for everyone, but I, I, I love the way it looks on the back of my camera. Right, hopefully that turns out all right.
we are up. Look at this. Not even a cairn for this one. Exactly like Wainwright said. Um, oh, it's wonderful. Look, we've got views back over to um, Derwent Water. I didn't see him the whole way up, so that was a nice surprise getting to the peak of Ullock Pike, Wainwright number 13. Um, it's still about another hour till sunset, but I'm up here now. I'm going to wait and see what happens. You can see there's no light at the minute, but I don't know if you can see that there. We've got that classic thing where there's a gap on the horizon. The sun could come down below the clouds and light up the land. But I feel like every time I say that, it doesn't happen. So we'll just we'll just wait and see, you know. I don't want to put any pressure on the, the weather. <laughs> um, one thing that I've, I was thinking about this on the way up, I seem to be categorising the fells by either being grand or charming. This one feels like it's somewhere in between, more than any that I've been up so far. You know, we've got, um, it feels really grand looking back that way. We've got the likes of... Um, Grassmoor, Pillar, looking back over towards the direction of Crummet Water, and we've got a nice panorama of the Scarfell Range as well. We've got Helvellyn up in the back as well, which is getting some uh, nice light on the peak every now and again. And uh, a tiny, tiny little bit of snow on him as well. So I'm going to grab a shot of him with the telephoto. That's probably going to be the last snow photograph of the, of the year. It's not really a snow photograph. But then, yeah, the charming vista over this way rolling hills and like it just flattens out into countryside of course the beautiful vista of Bassenthwaite and this is now my favorite panorama of Dumfries and Galloway my favorite view of Scotland I think I said my my best one so far was up Cragfell this has overtaken it so yeah I'm just going to chill out wait for the sunset grab this shot of Helvellyn he keeps getting a little bit of nice light on him every now and again and um, hopefully that light hopefully the sun comes down below them clouds and we get some nice light Oh. Oh, let me set this up somehow. Oh my goodness, you can probably tell by the glow on the face, the old glow on the face. It worked, we got it. The sun right now is just in that little gap. We've been getting um, the odd bit of light on some of the, the distant fells, the Scarfa range in particular, where I've done a little bit of a pano, you know, when you just get the tops of the fells with that light on. And that was amazing, just to witness. Just to witness. I think the, um, the experience is gonna be way better than the photograph. I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna be any good, but um it's gonna tell a story at the very least but honestly it is one of them uh tear in the eye like it's just it's so special to witness it man <laughs> in what, in what are we talking here quarter past nine at night up the side of a mountain freezing and you know when the conditions aren't great sometimes you just naturally just naturally think like what am i doing up here and then this happens and it's instantly like <sighs> You know why you're here. You know why you're doing it. And it's kicking off. Oh, absolutely class. So I've uh, I've taken the panel shot, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. And then I've just been grabbing a few um, with actually the wide angle lens. I wanted to use my 16 to 35, um, but because I'm shooting directly into the sun, I feel like the wide angle lens just performs better, you know, to get like that sun star effect. Um, so yeah, f22, one one third of a second and ISO 100 and guys, it looks wonderful on the back of the camera. I'm just going to grab a few shots now whilst it's looking. The sun's just dipping down behind Scotland. My goodness, it really, I mean, it doesn't get too much better than this, let's be honest. Um, I'm doing that thing where I'm going to, I'm going to exposure blend this in post, in, in Photoshop. And I'm doing that thing, you know, where you put your thumb in the front of the lens, uh, sorry, in front of the lens to block the direct sunlight, um, just to get rid of the lens flare on the land. And that'll be the shot for the foreground or whatever. But yeah, it, I think it's gonna work nicely. It is freezing and that is so hard to do. All right, I need to concentrate on this now, one second. So I think, I think I've got it. Let's have a look. I think I just got it when the light was still on the land. Um, the best time to catch a sun star, from my experience, is um, just as the sun, you know, the bottom half of the sun is like just going below the mountains. 
So you've just got the top bit doing the sun star sort of thing and, and the bottom bit isn't quite as harsh. Um, I think it, it just, just the sun itself isn't as harsh once it starts getting closer to that horizon and that's probably the reason. Might have caught it. Oh, the sky's lighting up a little bit as well. Oh, what an evening. Once again, the conditions and the photography mean so much to me. It's always a reminder that yes, the hikes are important and I love it, but this is such a passion for me as well. Landscape photography, class. Right, I'll show you these shots now. The pano, this one if it worked out, and maybe another one if the sky kicks off. But I am freezing. And, ah, whoa, cup of tea, I don't know what to say. God. Thank you for tuning in. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Out.